You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. To this week's episode of The Couch Bro Tatoes. I'm Alex. Dang old cap. This is the future cancel senator, Mr. Moore. <laughs> <laughs> and we got dang old cap. We doing King of the Hill today? I just feel like being dang old cap All today. All right. Well, you, you dang old cap today, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the title says, we're going to be digging back into Always Sunny in Philadelphia season three this time. And as we've already seen, each season just gets stupider and crazier as it goes on the characters are more dialed in as far as you know writing and uh, personality wise they can uh, they they know we're more familiar with the uh, every character's personality and uh what their uh where their lines are or how well those i don't keep think getting any of them anyway. have lines really <laughs> no oh, they're shameless fucking animals that's what... yeah that's the thing about this season it gets even more like just shameless <laughs> Oh yeah, kicking it right off with the gang finds a dumpster baby where D and Mac find an abandoned baby boy in a dumpster and try to look after and make money off him. And then Frank and Charlie get into dumpster diving and Charlie is still trying to figure fit, find out if Frank is this his real father and Dennis tries tricking an environmentalist into changing him uh, by chaining himself to a tree uh, to save him from being cut. Yeah, because Dennis is always trying to... He's trying to hook up with one of the... The uh, hippie's girlfriends or something like that, right? Yeah, I think so. Or like the, envir- the environmentalist girlfriend, because that's Dennis's fucking motivation is chasing pussy. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, it's understandable. It's, <laughs> but that's, that's his, own, that's his, only, yeah, motivation. That's his <laughs> only motivation. Again, he's Ted Bundy. <laughs> they and don't the, have a canoe. <laughs> but then uh, I love the moment that moments that D and Mac have with the uh, dumpster baby that they find. Because that's how the whole episode starts. They just find just uh, they're just walking around like it's that whole thing where like a lot of the episodes start off with uh, them just rambling about just nothing, just like yeah. a, just a random conversation that they're having, and they're like, "Oh, there's a fucking baby in the dumpster." Nope, the and, gang finds a baby, <laughs> and then and then Mac and D uh, take the uh, baby back to the apartment. It's just funny because you know uh, Rob uh, is it McKelney? Mc, how do you say his last name? McHelney? Yeah, whatever Henny? his last yeah. name. Yeah. Fucking Mac. <laughs> yeah. A goddamn Mac. And uh, Caitlin Olsen are married in real life and seeing those two together with a baby, you know, trying to act off, uh, you know, as a, you know, couple. As a couple, w- knowing the uh, real, how, uh, how they are in real life was just fun to watch. And it's always fun to watch those two do their, uh, you know, their family episodes or oh, whatever, yeah. too. Yeah. And honestly, even though this is the first episode in the season, it, to me, it's the most forgettable and least favorite. Like, there's so many other really great yeah. episodes in this season that this one just kind of dies by the wayside. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. O- only because, like, the next one I, is one of my favorites in the fucking series. Yeah, that's really, like, the most memorable part for me is the Dennis and, uh, or the D and uh, Max scenes. Oh, yeah, totally. And exactly for the reasons you were saying, since there's already that personal connection with them, you know, in real life, seeing it on screen, like, that's pretty fun. Which it's is like, pretty impressive for, like, some of the shit they say to each other. Oh, yeah. Especially what D says to Dennis. It has to be so cathartic though oh yeah just to let it ride oh mm-hmm. yeah it's just be like i am really about to fucking break your neck yeah. save it for tomorrow we're doing a scene yeah. <laughs> yeah. but like like some of the stuff like because dennis says some really mean shit to d so does danny devito well but, yeah. like you're standing there watching your wife get berated and like and then you're sitting there with charlie and he's just like the smartest one out of the group and it's just like oh my god mac what the fuck happened to you <laughs> like <laughs> Max playing like the already getting into deadbeat dad mode when yeah. they get back to the apartment and everything too. Yeah, he's take care of this baby. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to go out with the guys tonight. Yeah, shit like Where that. Where the fuck are you going? <laughs> <laughs> she gonna leave me with this baby? Yep. <laughs> And then uh, after that, we've got The Gang Gets Invincible. It's when uh, the Philadelphia Eagles hold open tryouts, uh, a la the movie Invincible, and Mac, Dennis, and Dee make an event of their own personal competition while Frank and Charlie go to a tailgate party. <laughs> yeah. Frank drops LSD and tries and winds up making things worse between them and the McPoyle family, uh, which is for the family from Charlie Got Molested, and Charlie gets America all over it by his ass. <laughs> yeah, the McPoyles are just those uh, recurring cool. characters that are just like so disgusting, but are foils for <sighs> the main character. Cast, which is always fun. Yes. And, and I love how this show has 
it's so much better than Family Guy for finding the most random ways to kick off a, a story beat. Because Family Guy's fucking, they'll do that. It's like all of a sudden, randomly, something happens. It's like, okay, this is going to be the story beat for the whole episode. Yeah. When um, uh, Charlie and uh, Frank roll up, and Frank's just like, this acid didn't hit me. He's like, he's like, you need to be tripping. He's like, I'm not feeling anything either. He's like, you should. I put like a whole sheet in your beer. And then it's like, the amount of like, losing his mind Charlie does in that moment is the reason why I love this show and I love him as an actor for some reason that chaotic talking over each other yet it's still you can still hear what everyone's saying and then like they still somehow meet at the stalemate at the same time at the very end where there's like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do <laughs> and then Frank gets trapped in the uh, or he traps himself in the fucking uh, McPoyle's camper yep. yes cause he has to take a shit and decides that he's going to go in that camper to go take a shit. <laughs> and then the acid like fucks with him. He's just kind of like, he, he, he tries totally getting get into the toilet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the one where uh, Charlie becomes green man, right? Yes. Yes. They, they, they had about teased about green man before, but they had never shown him. And they're like, you need to bring green man. He's like, I don't do green man anymore. That was like in my college days. It's the earth, but green man, green man. And yeah, so essentially you've got like Charlie whacked out on LSD in a green morph suit, just running mm-hmm. around causing chaos that was a good chunk of halloween uh costumes for uh that year as well the green man oh god for even years after it man because what this is 2007 dude even by the time i was back in north carolina in like 2013 2014 motherfuckers were still that was still like number one like costume yeah. it was ridiculous and then uh it was big in uh i think it all started in like hockey games yeah yeah, yeah. cocky man just got some weird fans yeah yeah I mean, well, Phil, they Phil, throw, Phil, they Phil, fucking shellfish on fucking ice see <laughs> philadelphia's got weird sports fan that's fans and that's what this uh episode is kind that's of what, about uh, tony tony's a big phillies fan ain't yeah it? so it all just makes sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fucking philadelphia eagles fans uh just put shit on the fucking uh, light poles or whatever, and we're like having people lick it or whatever, right? Yeah, they put they put like uh, some kind of grease or something on it. Throwing rocks at Santa Claus. Yeah, Paul yeah. Paul Paul mentioned that in the Discord that mm-hmm. they don't do that, but yeah, they're no. still throwing shit at Santa Claus. Yeah, so I don't give a fuck what they're throwing. <laughs> I, 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 that's why I essentially said that. I remember that bit. It's it's like the whole McDonald's coffee thing. It's like that urban legend has been like exaggerated so much it's like it's so much non-truths are available from it now it's, it's like the santa claus rocks things with philly fucking oh, it's, like she was like the, the, the whole uh, coffee on the old lady thing yeah yeah like it, it was way more dramatic and worse than like what the media actually oh, yeah, like yeah, portrayed yeah. it that, that, as that was, it was the whole like uh, this lady's just trying to scam me uh-huh. she got like second and third degree burns yeah yeah it was like the, shitty coffee <laughs> yeah like their coffee machine legit was busted and it was like Burning. cooking it like twice the temperature yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was more than that. <laughs> it probably happened in Philly. Yeah, but Mac and Dennis, fucking Philly, <laughs> yeah, fucking Philly, man. But yeah, Mac Dennis and D try to make the uh, the Eagles team, and D winds up getting farther than uh, any of the guys do. I know, and I as lo- a kicker, yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I love how for some for some reason she's only strong when she was acting like a dude. Yeah, and as soon as she took off her disguise and, and went to go damn. kick that ball, fucking shatters her goddamn ankle. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> just done. It's but like she like, had her moment, but she can't win. But that also goes to the NFL. The NFL doesn't ban any women from trying out. No, I which think it's fucking hilarious because, like, you think of like the one sport that would ban women would be the NFL, but that's actually just baseball. <laughs> really, baseball of all things. Yeah, baseball has a no uh, woman contract like active right now. NFL though, has, it's not. It's very equal. Yeah, because uh, any woman has the right to try out, and if she hits that echelon, she's can be drafted. Hmm. But like, there is a there is like a like a metered scale of performance that you have to meet at the combines and stuff like that. Right. But like from a purely like physical aspect, it's very odd about the baseball thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They had a guy with one hand play baseball. Fuck. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're not hitting anybody in baseball. So I'm also sitting here going, it's like, you know, with the right athletic girl, I mean, fucking running those bases. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, it's fucking weird. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. Anyway. <laughs> but then the episode after that, Dennis and Dee's mom is dead. Frank's ex-wife Barbara dies for real this time, leaving behind a big inheritance for Frank and Dee uh, that, uh, that Frank and Dee will do anything to get. Mac, Dennis, and Charlie all use Barbara's house as a men's club to try to make new male friends. Nothing sexual. No. <laughs> so that's probably the best part of this episode. They're uh, them trying to make a, uh, a fraternity in yeah. so many words too. And their dick invitations. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> It looks like a bicep. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Whatever, it totally bro. looks like a dick. I thought that's what we were going for. Like, super yeah. masculine. <laughs> super masculine dick. <laughs> What's more masculine than a dick? And they got the guy from fucking Seventh Heaven to show up. Yes! 
<laughs> You're all fucking monsters. <laughs> is, is this when uh, Fred Savage? Uh, was it this season that Fred Savage becomes more uh, involved with the writing and all that? I think so. Yeah, because you see his name quite a bit on this season. He's not on this episode, but like just about every other episode, uh, he's kind of got more involved. And you mean uh, the greatest actor ever? Fred I was sorry, Savage. I was going to say the greatest child TV actor of all time. <laughs> But no, good for him. He uh, got on a, I guess I don't know the story behind all that, but I'd like to read up more on that because, you know, good on Fred. But yeah, but yeah uh, the <laughs> when they get the uh, two kids that come to the house or whatever, they're just like, yes. we don't drink. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're going to get so fucked up tonight. <laughs> so you're going to remember this for the rest of your lives. And they're like, we need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I know. <laughs> And, was, and they're like, "Oh, we're here for the party." Oh, it's just you. It's just the four of us guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, "Oh, oh no." <laughs> but yeah, the whole uh, narrative of Frank being uh, Dennis and Dee's dad and Barbara kind of like uh, just comes to a com- screeching halt in this episode. You know, where it's like uh, it doesn't feel like they have that family connection anymore. Where it's like you know Frank's just part of the gang now at this point. Yeah, he's not like. Uh, this is the beginning of the whole exclusion of Frank as a father. Yeah. yeah. He's just one of the guys. Yeah, I was going to say, because after a while, you really do forget that like he's a he's the dad to two of them. Yeah, they don't know? even call him dad anymore. They're just like, Frank. Frank, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, not, I, not much more to really remember on that one. Just the one thing that always remember is just those fucking invitations. Oh, his invitations are seriously the best. <laughs> yeah, they're just like gr- they're like uh, going to the mall and like uh, pretty much grooming yeah. <laughs> all these yeah. fucking oh, young oh, boys. You, you'd be perfect for our party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Not that's, even realizing that, that is literally some Ted uh, Jeffrey Dahmer shit. Right yes. <laughs> hey, I found this nice uh, Asian kid at the shoe shore. <laughs> and then after that, the very first Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode I saw, the gang gets held hostage. Uh, the McPoyles hold the gang hostage at Patty's Pub. Frank crawls through the vents a la Die Hard to try to find his will, which Charlie hid up in the vent system. Yeah. <laughs> they just shut off the air and just make just have them all sweat and everything, God, too. Yes. They hold them up with, what, fake guns, little yeah, toy they're, guns? Yeah, they're fake guns. Yeah, they wanted to be a fake guns. It, it just... <laughs> I already jumped to the end of the episode, but when you mentioned fake guns, I just thought about like the very ending when everything is just getting revealed. My favorite bit is when one of the brothers is holding on to the other, like they're hanging off the uh, ledge of Patty's pub, and he's like, "Oh my god, oh my god, come on, pull him up!" He's like, "Pull him up," and Frank's like, "No, no you don't." Yeah, fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> starts pushing him back down, and you think it's that was one like of the this. best memes I've ever seen. He's yes, like, he's like, "I got you, I got you." No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and then like it's this super dramatic fall but he falls like six feet yeah <laughs> his, his feet just just like bloop, straight to the ground They're like, and they just give up the, the, the pole just give up. all right guys see you later and it was all just to get back at them for fucking up uh their brother's chance or something like yeah. that at um it's a weird it's a weird fucking festivist type revenge plan they all have against each other yeah except the gang that there's all accident but the polls are like very eventual. <laughs> oh yeah, and then Charlie. You know, I like how Charlie's smarter than all of them. Which oh yeah, got a fucking weird. He's, he's got he, the fucking crawl space little fucking yeah. layer that he has in yeah. the fucking vents. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah, and, and so he. Why did he hide the will in the vents? Because Charlie's listed as the uh, beneficiary. Right, but why did Charlie hide him in the vents? Because it's where he had shit. Because uh, Danny DeVito told him, "Hey, I need you to keep this safe." Okay, okay. And yeah, then yeah. like, so Frank doesn't change his mind and start revamping the will. Which he was going to do. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and I love all that the constant back and forth between um, Mac and uh, Charlie. Yeah, Mac and Charlie with the walkie talkie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because he gives Mac that fake ass fucking map. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, "That's not the real fucking map. Why That's would not- I give you the real map? You fucking <laughs> idiot." <laughs> <laughs> Again, fucking Charlie on the next level, man. I know he, he's all like, that acid he took. <laughs> I was gonna say he's three steps ahead, man. I love how like uh, that. The, they're the closest. Uh, they're also close with each other, but they don't trust each other for shit either. No, because no, they all know each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like how Dennis tries pulling out his old trusty and tries uh, seducing the girl's sister and like constantly licks her fucking lips. And he's like, no, 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 get me out of here. <laughs> no shame. No shame. After that, we've got the Aluminum Monster versus Fatty Magoo. Oh, yeah. This is where we find out about Dee's backstory a little bit. Yes, the gang gets involved in a fashion in the fashion design world when Dee gets jealous of her high school best friend, played by Judy Greer, uh, who is now a successful boutique owner. Meanwhile, Frank restarts his old sweatshop business and coaches Mac on how to run one. <laughs> yeah. shout, out, shout out to Judy Greer, man. She is everywhere on television. Right? She's the uh, voice of Cheryl. Cheryl. Mm-hmm. Cheryl and, or uh, Charlene. Sh- or Charlene. Charlene. Yeah, Charlene, <laughs> Cheryl, Carol. Yeah, she, she's 
<laughs> she's been on like two and a half men, The Simpsons. She was mm-hmm, on The Simpsons mm-hmm. for a little while. She had her own TV show on FX uh, for a minute. I forget what it's called. Oh, yeah. I remember, I'm trying to remember the thing. I think it's like You're the Worst or yeah, something like that. She showed up in a Rescue Me, I think, twice. As Pro- like, this I'm, is a random maybe. bitch. Arrested <laughs> Development. Oh, yeah, everywhere. If there was a mm-hmm. show, she was probably in it. Yeah. She's being a bitch. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to her agent. Yeah, she's very typecast like that, too. Oh, yeah, too. and reaching the uh, top 10 on the uh, iTunes charts when they made that country music. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love country. I like how the, the people of Archer that made Archer were like, you know, we could just go in the music business like for no goddamn reason. <laughs> but, yeah, she gets Jude, uh, jealous of uh, Judy Greer because Judy Greer grew up to be, uh, you know, she hot. was the, to be hot. <laughs> and be uh, Judy you know, Greer. But, but her whole thing was like uh, that she was like the fat kid in high school while yeah. – uh, you know, D was the, the aluminum, aluminum monster, monster because she had the back brace and all that yep. shit. So she's just getting, uh, you know, just petty revenge on Judy Greer by, you know, just wanting to, you know, make her own clothes. Yeah. And uh, they make a sweatshop. <laughs> yeah, Frank yeah. makes a sweatshop. <laughs> like like his days in Nam. That, they keep referring to that. Yeah. It's like, this reminds me of Nam. You were in Vietnam for ni- in 1993. <laughs> you have and? no idea what it was like. Yeah. <laughs> we well, lost some good men at that sweatshop. <laughs> It was like, like, like fucked up about Frank is, and you'll see this in the rest of the series. His business acumen is right up there with like a Nazi Henry Ford, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like a dictator Steve Jobs. He's like, no, you got to keep these people less fed. We got to get some, we got to get some music rolling on this goddamn uh, intercom. But it had to be news. It's got to be somebody reading off the news. <laughs> like or, a, what was it? They had like uh, odd like screaming chant stuff yeah. going on, and then they had like a, like like a Cubano sweatshop. You know, they had a fucking. Like someone reading the news in Spanish uh-huh. or some shit. They're all like Eastern European Ukrainians <laughs> that he hires Polish people. And they put and they put a uh, Mac puts in like a, a tugboat fucking like a whistle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Time's up. Let's leave. Yeah, they're like uh, they, I forget who uh, pulls the uh, uh, the the uh, lever for it, and then somebody was just like, "Who did like who brought in the fucking uh, tugboat uh, whistle?" And Mac's just like, "That was me." That was yeah, me. Just, <laughs> with a shit eating grin on his face. But like Charlie's so like. Dropped in into oh, a yeah. sweatshop game. Oh yeah, he he is like he's the best little worker. Yeah. Uh, Mac uh, is trying to find the most perfect model. Yeah, <laughs> and Dennis is like, no, she's too fat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they got like a a solid twelve trying out all yeah. the clothes, <laughs> and then it, it cultivates to fucking Dennis running in with like fucking balloons for tits and all this <laughs> other stuff. I love the cop. He's like, oh shit, you were the aluminum monster. Oh fuck, and you were Fatty Magoo. How y'all been? <laughs> I'm so and so from high school. He's like, yeah. oh man, that's great. Hey man, what happened to your brother? And he just busts you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is perfection. <laughs> and he looks like a, just a dumpy version of Buffalo Bill. <laughs> he kind of have kind of has a Buffalo Bill uh, moment there where he's putting on the lipstick. <laughs> he does. Yeah, because D, D, all she wants to do is make one specific dress, but uh, Dennis is trying to sell his own dress and keeps lying to everyone, saying that they bought like 20 dresses and they've got to do them up right, and then it was like 100 dresses and everything else. Yeah, it was... there are no good people on this show. No, this is one of my favorite episodes of the season, though. Oh, yeah, even absolutely. Cr- even Cricket takes a turn. <laughs> oh, what was Cricket's moment in this episode? No, no, I'm talking about like through the season. Like, oh, okay. yeah, like, yeah. Even he becomes a piece of shit. He just gets worse as the series hey, progresses, Cricket, how you too. Doing? Found that I sold that crack, man. <laughs> I sold that tr- no. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, the gang solves the North Curious situation. The gang is at odds with their most successful, with a more successful Korean pub owner who bears a striking resemblance to former former North Korean dictator Jim Long Il. <laughs> I refuse to say it correctly. Kim Jong Il. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, was, I know. I won't say it right. Fuck him. Uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie becomes involved uh, with the owner's daughter. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Charlie. Can pull it from anywhere, dude. Char- anywhere. Charlie's the man. The, the black college they went to, got it. <laughs> Charlie's get, got game with everybody except the waitress, his wife. <laughs> yeah, his real life wife. <laughs> but yeah, wasn't the uh, the Korean uh, uh, restaurant owner? Was she, wasn't she like uh, it was like a female character? But uh, he kept she kept saying like I'm a I'm a guy or whatever, and it was confusing the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> I think so. I thought yeah. I thought that was the one where like she started just kind of following him. She did follow him because he's like, hey, did you? Yeah. Did you follow me all the uh-huh. way to my place? And That's what like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, and it, any one of you, us would be like, wanna, that, that would be terrifying. Uh huh. And she's like, you want to come in? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want to come in? Have, oh my have God. Some you could have been a victim in the 80s. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been a fucking Jeffrey Dahmer handshake. <laughs> And the thing is that that to me is the most memorable moment. That and them, I remember them kind of sneaking, trying to get a good look at the Korean bar owner and then being like, he looks like Kim Jong. <laughs> 2007, where where uh, he was public enemy number one too. Yeah, yeah, that was like right before he died. Yep, right for Ung, and that who's 
Ooh, what was after that? Kim Jong Un. Yeah. 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 This uh, crazy ass sister. <laughs> it was uh, Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il, and Kim Jong Un. Mm. I rewatched. Uh, mm. <laughs> and it'll be King John. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, it'll be his sister Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Have you like- seen her? She's fucking terrifying. Dude, she looks like a Mortal Kombat villain. Yeah, yeah. she looks like she works for Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is that she is terrifying? Is that Evil Lynn? No, her yes. name's her name's Evelyn, but uh, we call her Evil Lynn. <laughs> Oh shit! North Korea, best Korea now. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just fucking cartoon characters over there too. And this one was also written by Fred Savage. Yep. Yep. And then after that, we've got the gang sells out. When a restaurant chain offer, offers up the Bob Patty's Pub, the guys trying to make a make the deal go through by showing the rep a good time. Uh, when Dee discovers she won't benefit from the deal, she quits her job at Patty's again and yeah. pursues uh, and pressures the waitress to get her a job at a TGI Friday style restaurant. Oh yeah, because it's uh yeah it's like shenanigans ain't it or something. something like that. Yeah, yeah, they all wear those same colors oh, and all that. Oh, I pissed it with the next motherfucker that says shenanigans. Well, all of them, <laughs> all of them wind up going over to that restaurant to try. Yeah. To find work, right? Oh, did someone have to get a real job? Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of real jobs, uh, shout out to OnlyFans for canceling porn. <laughs> God damn it. So I'll be the first voice on Man, reason. Man, a lot on of stuff that. happened when the week goes. Going, yeah, right? There's a terrorist in the fucking DC. Those Taliban won finally. and <laughs> They won finally. I'm, I'm ready to see them in the Olympics. <laughs> no, the, uh, the thing is, I was. I, was looking up the OnlyFans thing because just like everything that happens, fucking no one can get their facts straight when everything Magical. first comes out. Content creators are not going to be restricted. It's the users that follow the content creators no, uh, won't be allowed to post anymore. I saw oh, the mean, same I thing can... that happened to Tumblr. Uh, Mastercard was pulling out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, no, with Tumblr, no one was allowed to post. Yeah, but, the uh, actual models on OnlyFans are still going to be allowed to do their thing. They're not reading it properly. The users that follow them are also allowed to make posts. Those users are no longer allowed yeah. to make sexual posts and anymore. I saw uh, Mastercard was pulling out. Yeah, yeah. Because of the... Some weird Christian thing. That'd have been a great. I don't get that. It's money. Take the fucking money. That'd have been a great Always Sunny episode if they did like an OnlyFans Only account hey, or some shit like that. Try to, get, try to get D into OnlyFans instead of Charlie. <laughs> no, it'd be Dennis. <laughs> what, wasn't there a subplot where D tried doing like a cam girl thing where she like got a wig and shit? I don't, I don't remember that. I don't know all these by heart. Yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the later. Yeah, seasons. I was gonna say I we, we don't know these like King yet. of the Hill. Sorry, guys. I do. I do have a funny story. Uh, a guy we know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he moved in with his girlfriend. They're now married and have kids. I remember the story, yeah. And they finally got internet in their single wide at yeah. the time. They live in a house now, but at the time. And I had this 50-foot Ethernet cord so they could run it to their Xbox in their room. Yeah. And his girlfriend approaches me and asks, hey, because they didn't have jobs at the time. One, the other one was a musician. And says, do you think I would make money as a cam girl? <laughs> and let me just say, she was... A fucking thirteen. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I agree. I know. I, I remember. She dropped down to a decent dime when she dated this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, no. And she asked me this. I said, "Yeah, of course you would." And then I get a phone call from the motherfucker. He's like, "Did you tell my girlfriend that she could make money as a cam girl?" I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." He's like, "How much do you think?" And I'm just like. Jesus Christ, this conversation <laughs> turned. <laughs> this is not the way I thought it was going to go. So you talk to your wife about this, sir, yeah. or girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Get that money, bro. But yeah, what happens at the end of this episode is that uh, they treat th- this uh, new uh, TGI Friday's uh, style restaurant like patties. So they're like drinking on the job and screwing around and yeah. shit like that. So, it, But it's in the corporate world. <laughs> yeah. So they not only just does the gang get fired, but they kind of shut the restaurant down, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Then after that, we got Frank set Sweet D on fire. The gang tries to become local celebrities by creating their own public access news show and making yes. it big on the hip uh, club scene. Yeah, because D's trying to be like Paris Hilton famous and shit yes. like that. Just wanting to go, go into clubs and, you know, partying and things like I, that. I love any time D tries to make herself look pretty. And like overdoes the fucking makeup. Yeah. <laughs> just turns into a monster. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So we mentioned before, like Dee's not a, like an unattractive woman, but but that's part of the comedy too. Is where it's like uh, when she tries too hard to look like a parasol or whatever. That's where like the fucking like you know hilarity All the crack ensues. Show. Uh huh. 
but yeah, it's just like she winds up in a, like it a, a, just backfires on her. We're like, but Dennis kind of like wants to become famous too, like yes. and like just kind of throws just throws her under the bus like he normally does. Well, it's because one person in the group can't have a singular idea. No, no. everyone <laughs> has to go do the fucking thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Charlie has an idea where, like, well, I'll, I'll, you want to be a karate instructor. I want to be a karate instructor. In fact, I'll be a better karate instructor yeah. than you. <laughs> no, fuck you. This was my idea first. Well, I'm going to do it better. Yeah, basically. <laughs> You're going to be in a wheelchair? Well, fuck, I'm being in a motorized wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically. on crutches, I'll be in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. They're fucking animals, man. Oh, yeah. There's no fucking chill. And no. that fucking uh, public no asset access show they were watching with, like, the shirtless dude, you know. Oh, uh, my God. And yes. the fucking, like, those backgrounds or whatever. They're sitting there going, like, this is stupid. And then, like, five minutes later, they're like, Oh, okay, this is fun. <laughs> Anytime I watch a show and they have a public access type episode, yeah, those are the gym episodes. Oh yeah, because it's such a good plot line. Well, I think Always Sunny always shines uh, uh, when anytime they do like those weird like public access type edits, like a uh, fight milk. Yeah. Like the commercial for Fight Milk is fucking great, yeah. and it's like it's that same kind of like low rent public access vibe. And I think that's just are where you they a bouncer? Shine. Here, drink Fight Milk. It's made with. Crow. No, no, it'll make you fight like a crow. <laughs> that's that's still Charlie on acid. <laughs> right. It'll make you strong and fight like a crow. <laughs> yeah, ever since that one NFL tryout day, he has never been the same. No, no, he's actually become smarter. I forget what leads to the event where Frank actually does set D on fire because it just happens briefly. Yeah, I know. It's Th- like, this was one of the other ones. Th- this was probably the second one in the season that just kind of flew under the radar for me. Yeah, so I forget exactly what happens, but uh, no, it was all about, you know, the whole long and short of it is uh, D sucks at being a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, basically. And I forget how they get on uh, on TV or if they actually make the TV episode too. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, but then the, the episode after was fucking gold. Might be my favorite overall episode, honestly, oh, simply yeah. because just the, the conversations they wind up having in it. And sorry, CJ, this is not my title. Yeah. <laughs> but sweet D's were dating a retarded person. D tells Dennis, uh, well, Dennis tells D that her new amateur rapper boyfriend is mentally disabled. Frank, Charlie, and Max start their own <laughs> band, but can't decide what type of music to play, especially when Charlie pins a disturbing song, Sexually Motivated, or be, about being sexually molested, rather, by a strange creature called the Nightman. So like we get like hints of Charlie's backstory, but we never get like the full story of what happened to him and what makes him tick. But this is, you know, with the title being what it is and all, it's a great fucking episode. Oh, yeah. No, like I said, this is probably one of my favorites from the season because every plot was fucking great. Us being musicians, of course, love the fucking bits of them trying to fight and figure out what kind of music to play and try to get the look and sound right. Of course, all of that was just fucking gold. And uh, and again, that was like everybody's ringtone when that came out to the Day Man, Night Man song. Oh, yeah. Well, this was even just the start of it because yeah, they eventually the turned it into the big musical play and everything. Day Man, the fighter of the Night Man. Night Man. Oh. With the, with the, uh, you, you gotta pay the troll toll to get this boy's soul. Yeah. Boy's soul. I can't wait we, we, until we get to that episode. <laughs> but yeah, Dee's dating a rapper uh, who everybody says like the next Eminem or whatever, and the the gang's just like, "Are you sure he's not uh, sure he's not disabled like that?" And Dee's just like, uh, "No, he's not." Like convincing herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's not handicapped, but in any way, shape, or form, or whatever. But they throw in those little hints. Yeah, you know, there's like, like those... eating the snacks and shit like that, and Dee's just like. Uh, uh, no, they do such a good job at making you like second guess both sides throughout the entire time. Because there's other times where you're just like, okay, he might just be a little weird. And then you're like, no, no, he might be a little special. And then other times it's like, oh, well, actually, he's being pretty sharp. I don't know. Maybe he's just kind of a little bit slow. And then, and then it all gets confirmed that everyone was right at the very end with his diss track. Yeah. And he like fucking like rips D a new one oh too. My it's great. God, I fucking love it. What was, uh, what was his name? Uh, they don't give us little, little something, little Kevin. Some, yeah, yeah it's I'm something, sure it's something, something like oh that. God. Yeah, because I remember, I don't remember him as much as I remember the the costume changes. Oh, yeah. my, yes, <laughs> with the band, because yeah. he looked like eventually they go from like he's wearing like weird '80s sports clothing. Well, because they eventually get Dennis in the band. Yeah, and Dennis like shows up like this fucking David Bowie, yeah. uh, fucking um guy from the Doors. Why am I forgetting Jim his name? Morrison? Jim Morrison, like yeah. yeah, it's like a total like Jim Morrison, David Bowie clash kind of thing he's doing. And meanwhile, like Max trying to be like hair metal as fuck. Yeah, and like. De- and Charlie's like the only like one with musical talent in the yeah, group. And it's like, crush- he's like, again, Charlie being the fucking, you know, the man yeah. crushing it on a fucking piano. <laughs> and didn't like Frank have like face makeup on or some shit. No, no he had a suit. Oh yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Frank was wearing a suit. And he tried to play the drums until he got kicked out of the music store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, no, I, I, this one's probably at least at least in my top three, if not my favorite of the season, mainly because just every plot point in it was just really good. Most of the time you get like a really good A plot or a really good B plot, and the other one is just kind of there to, you know, fill it up. Nah, to me, this, this one, all points were good on this. Yeah. And then after that, we've got Mac is a serial killer. This is a top 10 for me. Oh, top so 10 far, overall. So far, so far over watching the show, this is one of my top 10s just because of how batshit insane it evolves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Half of the gang suspects Mac might be a serial killer who's been terrorizing young women, especially when they notice how distant he's become. The other half try to catch the serial killer themselves. Meanwhile, Mac himself renews his relationship with Carmen, the transgender woman from Charlie Has Cancer. Yeah, yeah that's the whole point. Like He doesn't want to let anybody know that he's seeing Carmen because she's transgender and that yeah. you know challenges his you know his fr- I hate to use the phrase Fra- but yeah. fragile masculinity bro it is the best way to describe it yeah but no that's like the whole thing but uh, everybody thinks he's you know a serial killer and it's fucking hilarious <laughs> and I forget how it gets Dennis. resolved yeah exactly <laughs> Dennis is a serial killer I love how they're chasing what's her name the waitress yes they're walking behind her they're dressed like clowns. <laughs> yes and then she turns around and pss- no, it's like <laughs> you just see a Dennis and D walking behind her, and just like when it shows like D's face, you just hear wah, 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 the fucking clown shoes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking clown. <laughs> oh, I know. There's like five or six scenes of them like chasing the waitress down yeah. city blocks and shit. And I love Dennis's like first recollection, like first realization is, "Hey, D, just pretend to be a prostitute." <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mac can come out here and murder you. Yeah, and then, uh, then, uh a pimp shows up yeah and sells them back to Dennis yes <laughs> oh I, know. I love how he just rolls up immediately claims her and then tries selling her back yeah like I ain't shit it's like no this is my hoe now it's like wait what? no 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 that's not that's not what's going on here no no <laughs> what was the pimp's name do you remember it was something silly and pimpish uh, silly and pimpish <laughs> oh, I can't remember his name it just says pimp on the cast <laughs> oh damn <laughs> but uh, I, uh, yeah that was I like that bit a good bit but yeah what's your name uh uh, Carmen. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Dude, she, Brittany Daniel from Joe Dirt. <laughs> yeah. Tokyo Rose at the trailer park. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if they were like Rose. talking about her like operation and it still like kind of like shows like uh, her legs spread open with like a giant fucking like Robert Plant pickle in her fucking pants and shit <laughs> like that too. <laughs> Which also just means Mac likes him big. <laughs> I'll tell you I heard a joke but I'll tell you after the show <laughs> it's fucking so, so future says uh, Senator Morrison doesn't get cancelled again shit this is a $200 uh, this is a $100 tier uh, Patreon uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> joke no, I'll join the Republican Party and never get cancelled <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you fucking say on them <laughs> Oh, God. And then the episode after that, Dennis looks like a registered sex offender. He does, doesn't he? He really does. <laughs> Especially, like, they'll do certain, like, clips of him where he, like, is super sweaty and he'll have kind of, like, the glazed over eyes and yeah, the half-open little... mouth and he's like, Ugh. I love that. It's like, it? good God. Is it D or Charlie that takes him to the playground? I think it's D. Yeah, I thought, I was first thinking D, but then I started second-guessing on Charlie. Because Charlie would do it, too. Charlie would have done it. Because uh-huh. the world's set up where he's just showing these kids like calisthenics and shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's yeah, wearing yeah. shirtless and wearing yeah. like a handlebar Oh, it mustache. was D. It was D that yeah. brought them and there. She's yeah, like, she's like walking over to this guy. Hey, you see that guy over there? He's a registered sex, sex offender. Guy. He just got out of jail and having to uh, reacclimate himself into society. And, and, and he's this guy just get up like what? Uh, and he's like, all right, kids, we're first gonna do some squats. And he like turns around. And he's yeah. like shaking his ass and everything, <laughs> bending over. Now, kids, you want to get physical? It's okay. Just go ahead and get with it. Turns around. It's just all the fucking fathers just like staring and daggers Ready into this motherfucker's ass. soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love how uh, they eventually wrap it up by uh, they finally confront the dude because they're like, there, there's this like you know fucking serial rapist out there, child molester that looks like me, but I don't think he looks like me. He looks nothing like me. Then they show up and it's him in a fat suit. Yes. <laughs> I think and they bring a little boy with them. Yes. <laughs> oh, by that, and I don't. They paid the boy, but he says some really nasty oh, shit. Oh yeah. So what do we say in court, little Johnny? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the Uncle Badman touched my no no places. He yeah. gave me uh, red. Uh, he gave me grape juice that made me feel dizzy. Yeah. Just like, my uh, butt hurts. You know, yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> like blatant shit to oh, say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> and then we see uh, Max Father in this episode, Luther. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Luther. I love every time that motherfucker shows up because he always gets so misunderstood, but by the end of it, is always going to kill the guys. <laughs> the guy that plays uh, 
their dad his dad is fucking great because he just has the greatest uh eye acting ever yeah. too for a crazy person who yeah. just got out of jail it's just like uh yeah, you can't see it on the on the podcast <laughs> but still <laughs> because they're running around uh well I say they, uh, Mac and Charlie are running around with them and he's got like this notebook full of names and you find out it's like a, my name is Earl situation yeah. where he's like having to go around and apologize for all the crap he did or thank people for setting them on the right path and shit. But somehow they wind up figuring out and connecting dots somehow that the people in the book are going to be the people that he's killing. <laughs> and so it's like when they saw their own names and they're like, well, what did we do? What did we I was going to take you to a baseball game or an Eagles game or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, it's, they like arrest him and everything. They find out he wasn't the serial killer or whatnot. And they're like, oh, but, but he's already getting arrested. Well, Why is he getting arrested if he wasn't the serial killer? He's like, oh, well, he uh, he was he broke his probation to like pick up flowers or tickets or something like that. It was like something for the family he broke probation for. And he's like, yeah, well, I was going to take you to the big game. Does this, that, and the other that you always wanted to do. to meet the judge and the prosecutor and apologize for everything. Yeah, so. that's what <laughs> Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing something good that broke his, uh, broke it. And then they were like, oh, so, so, so you weren't mad at me. You weren't going to kill me. He's like, no, I wasn't. No, I am but now. I am now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once I get out of here, I your that, ass is mine. I, we, I watched that here with y'all. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I left and went back. I was like, I know that motherfucker was somewhere. And I was like, that's the asshole from Cliffhanger. I never saw Cliffhanger. Oh, Cliffhanger's oh, great. John Lithgow's a bad guy. Sylvester Stallone. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, Sylvester Stallone's in it. It's an yeah. action movie. It's hard for me to see John Lithgow as anything other than the funny guy from Third Rock from the Sun. No. Or oh, dude. the old decrepit dude from uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> oh, dude. He's such a great fucking villain, though. I haven't seen uh, Cliffhanger, but Dexter uh, is what Dexter, I love. Raising Kane. He was a dude's stepfather. Oh, okay. And he was fucking terrifying. Yeah. He puts his fucking hand on this kid's shoulder and basically explains to him how many times he's going to beat the shit out of him before he kills his mom in front of him. Like, <laughs> Damn. Like, in so many words in that cool John Lithgow voice. And then he yeah, does yeah. this. <laughs> it's like, okay, Lord Farquaad, I get it. <laughs> yeah, Lord Fuckwad. <laughs> yeah. Lord Fuckwad. <laughs> I love that play. I love that play on words. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good, man. All right, then after that, we got a two-parter, which, uh, looking at the release day, actually came out the same night, so they actually did back-to-back yeah, airings. Yeah, these were the first two episodes I ever saw. Oh, no shit. Uh-huh. But yep, the gang gets whacked. In the first episode, the gang finds cocaine in a pair of speakers, and they decide to try and sell it, only to learn that the cocaine belonged to some mobsters who, of course, want it back. And to pay off the debt, they buy more drugs and try to sell them at a country club. And, so, and seeing them like try to buy drugs from, like what was it, Frank's guy at the fucking uh, mechanic shop or whatever. Yes. Yeah. And this is where like to, uh, there's a lot of going on yeah in this oh yeah in, in the hour-long episode charlie wants a horse he becomes a jockey he works party, yes. party with jockeys <laughs> who are monsters yes they are uh, you find out that um after they get all the drug money back with the help of cricket yes yes uh, by making him devolve more <laughs> That poor into dude. Into a trash can fire of a human being. I forgot yes. just how over a season he devolved that quick. I thought it was a longer progression. This is, I think this is the season he gets burned. I yeah. think so. He's just out in the middle of the uh, the road, like on fire, and a horse, is, and a horse from the yeah, racetrack like, is behind him. <laughs> he's like, holy shit, am I? Like, there's literally a fucking horse here. But like, I look, I like how the gang panics when they give him money. He's like, we need you to go do something. Okay. Comes back. Look what I got, guys. I got two fucking oil drums. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's like, I tra- you traded all that drugs? No, no, no. He's like, I traded it for a drum kit. Yeah. yeah that's what he's like. I traded it for a drum kit. And he's and like, like, I'm just going to play inspiration. Ah, 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 it's ah, jazz ah. fusion, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you Should've... take the drugs? Okay, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where they sell out cricket. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. sell them out to the fucking mob. Yep, yep. <laughs> Max working for the mob is a dishwasher. I, know, I love that because he's scared to death of them. He's yeah. scared to death that he's going to get killed, and he's just like, "Fuck it, I won't in." And he's he's thinking you're going. He's like, "If I get in, they won't kill me." And they're yeah. just like, "Fuck this, dude. We're just going to make him do grunt work for the and, next uh, week." What do they it, call him? They give him like a little bitch boy, or basically bitch boy, something like that. <laughs> I said, Paul Servino shows up. I think you're right. He's the he's the uh, he's the guy. He's the mob boss because he was the mob boss in Goodfellas. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Paul Servito. I'm just like, what a pull you did. I know oh, you got yeah. Danny DeVito or uh, Danny DeVito and all these other people, but fucking Paul Sorvino. <laughs> For a show like this. Yeah, a comedy show about shameless assholes. Yeah. yeah. Almost to the point where even the mob is kind of getting made fun of, kind of yeah. like the butt of the joke to an but extent. I think, I think because of this is why shows like Shameless exist. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A no, a no name cast that put William H. Macy with them. Yeah. <laughs> and I think John Cusack. <laughs> I think uh, Sopranos was wrapping up around this time, too. And so it that was. was still kind of fresh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause, yeah, because it. 
hit his tenth or sixth season. By so the, I remember like because they broke it up. Yeah, remember, this is two thousand seven. Yeah, when this I, yeah they came broke out. it up. So I remember exact. I remember exactly when that uh, last episode happened. And I didn't even watch the show because everybody bitched the fuck about it. No, I love the last episode. I, love I the do show. too. I just love the show. Yeah, I, I need to rewatch it again. I saw the first episode over the weekend again. Where he beats the fuck out of that dude. <laughs> That's like a, a doctor. Oh, oh, with the uh, the big mouth. Oh, wait. No, that was the first episode. My favorite uh, Sopranos kill is still big is big, the big mouth Billy Bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he just beats the fuck out of that poor dude in front of that hospital. Yep. <laughs> He's like, doesn't have insurance. <laughs> he points yeah. out. Doesn't have insurance. <laughs> oh, my God, damn. No, and, and you, something you brought up a minute to uh, go and to. And you know if James Gandolfini was still alive, he'd be in the show. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. As one of the funniest motherfuckers. Oh, dude. Oh, God. That Now that would be an episode. Just that fucking, like, uh, just dry delivery, too. But oh, try my to God, be... yes. <laughs> but no. Uh... I also love the fact that, like you mentioned a minute ago, Charlie wanted a horse. <laughs> he was obsessed with getting this fucking horse. I love it because he was just like, well, I'm just going to go back to the track. He's like, where do you think you're going? I'm just going to go back to the track. You're like, going to look at the horse. I'm going to go look at the horses. <laughs> I like when they abandoned Mac at the track. Yes. Because <laughs> he's not doing his job right. Because <laughs> Dennis becomes a prostitute of some sorts. Yeah, they go, oh, they all yeah, go, they the all male go, prostitute. Yeah, they all go, be, go to the country club with their own agendas and so shit Mac, like that. All Mac trying to make and money. Mac are trying to sell Adderall or pills or some shit. Yep. And... Dennis, Dennis is a whore. Yep. And Charlie's working with horses and jockeys. And yeah. he's partying no. hard with the fucking jockeys. Uh, and the jockeys party harder than anyone else that we've seen in the I show. I like the jockey just can't look, like, casually looks at him. He's like, uh, you mind if I do a bump off your dick? <laughs> yeah. <He's> like, <laughs> what the fuck, bro? He's like, no. No. No, <laughs> no, no, you can't. Cause, you know what, Charlie? Because that's the night, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Dennis wasn't because... <laughs> See, no, Dennis wasn't being a prostitute. He was being a companion. That Escort. Was, yeah, as well. <laughs> you know what, he was, he was like, trying like, to avoid being called a prostitute the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like I just talked into about a guy at the bar that fucking Danny DeVito pays off. Yes! yes. Yeah, he, he he's pays like, I need you to go out there and convince that, convince that man that he's a prostitute. Yeah, he, he tells the dishwasher he's going to give him like 50 bucks. He gives him a 20. He's like, you're short. He's like, ah, fuck off. And just walks out. And he's like, ah, oh, whatever. Fucking puts his hairnet back on. His apron starts washing dishes again. <laughs> yeah. Frank is uh, pimping out who was, uh, up until uh, a few episodes ago, like embraced him as his son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if your son's good, I guess I mean, your son's That's good or something. If you're already going to be that much of a piece well, of shit. Well, it's the first time he's pandered to being a homosexual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think uh, then they make a joke about D doing it too, and like Frank makes a joke going like, or uh, tells D, it's like, you're not pretty enough or some shit yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, you're not pretty a whore. <laughs> <laughs> whore. 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 <laughs> you know, you got to say it like James got a feeny. Hua. Yeah. Hua. She was a hua, Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like throughout both episodes, they kept making like a, a getting whacked off uh, jokes yeah. and shit like that, too. They whacked me off. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I was just like, you know, we talked about it in the first season, the second season, but like, seasons as a whole just devolve even worse. Oh my they God, get so yes. much fucking worse. It's like they start to tame. And then it's like, if you're going to keep watching. We're going to keep bumping it up just one notch each episode, yeah, just okay. one little bit. We're not going to come straight out the gate and fucking shock you, but we'll we'll bump yeah. it up a little bit. So by the time you get to the end of the season, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I forget what happens at the very end uh, the with the uh, mobsters. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Cricket gets caught. That's right. They sell him out to the mob. <laughs> Poor but, Cricket, he com- but he comes back, and it only gets worse. <laughs> of course. Because they burned him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But in the meantime, bums making a mess all over the damn yeah. city. It starts off with uh, them walking down the uh, outside of Patty's, and they just see this homeless guy just jerking off behind the dumpster, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and they just stop, no stare at him, no dialogue, no nothing. <laughs> uh, and then the title card comes up. Yeah. <laughs> How do you start off an episode? <laughs> yeah, Mac and D become vid- uh, vigilantes uh, to solve the homeless problem. Meanwhile, yeah. after buying a junkyard police card in, uh, in order to scare the homeless away from the the bar, Frank and Dennis dress as police costumes uh, and abuse the public while Charlie dresses as S- Serpico. Yeah, Serpico. Al that's what it was. Yes. <laughs> and tries to expose them. <laughs> yep. and yeah, anytime like any of these characters get any sort of power, they abuse the fuck out of oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And immediately have to have characters. They're, they're giving everyone backstories and no one yeah. can keep following along, which yeah. only makes them mad in the moment, which then blows their cover. Because, <laughs> uh, like, Mac and D get, like, really deep into the whole, like, vigilante bullshit because it's based off the new york vigilantes yeah you know, the uh, red uh, red bear uh, berets or some shit oh i uh, i think it was also um god remember that one superhero that was around the yeah. new uh, the new york area and then all of a sudden like over the span of like two days fucking turned on a dime it was like fucking like 
outed by the public and immediately yeah. disgraced. Yeah. I can't I can't remember his name right off, but I watched like a fucking YouTube documentary on him. It was like thirty minutes. I mean, yeah, long. it was a whole thing about vigilantes for a month and a half. Like yeah. during this time I was watching like really? Yeah, like people are like legit work. spending like thousands for their own like ver- it, of course it's not the name Batman, but, but their are, own basically yeah. like their own basically like Batman suits with like uh, Kevlar and shit in it, and like their Stab own best the yeah, and like pads. their own fucking like like f- ways of like shooting non lethal weapons out of their fucking wrists and shit like that. Like people are spending money to do this and going out into the city streets, finding bank robbers and trying to like capture them and do the ship. So the police can come trying to live out comic books. See, this is why Batman is a fictional thing. (laughs) Guys in real life, rich people go to space on the backs of slaves (laughs) (laughs) on a dink. (laughs) But no, I like the, uh, Charlie's, uh, narrative in this episode where he does go full Al Pacino and uh, yeah. Serpico trying to uh, expose Dennis and, uh, and Mac as, as yes. corrupt cops. Yes. He, just, he just kind of strolls up to the fucking uh, police office in the fuck in his, the costume and everything yeah. too and starts talking like Al Pacino. He goes like, I have some information for uh-huh. you. And the guys in the police station are like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, no, not, absolutely not taking him seriously. And he starts yelling and he's like, I am trying to clean up the city! <laughs> so I never saw that movie either. Uh, it's really it just, good. Is it just called Serpico? Is it yeah, called something called else? It's about, it's about corrupt police and Al Pacino trying to... It's based off a real man. And just Pacino just yelling his ass off like he not, always not does. yelling his ass off all the time. He's actually doing something in the movie, but he does yell a lot. <laughs> he's talk, dealing with corrupt cops. He doesn't talk about great asses. Or no, not like that, that one. Not that. <laughs> he's a cop in that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> fucking heat. Yeah, that's a great fucking movie, though. Dude, that, is, that is a good watch-along movie. It is. I have to remember that. Oh, yeah. It's loud as fuck because it scared the whole city block because they used real gunfire. Oh, shit. And like people on the other side of the block didn't know what the fuck was going on. So they thought, holy shit, the cops are having a shootout. We need to leave. Oh, damn. Whole buildings were fucking. People were like in buildings and shit like, what the fuck is going on outside? Because they forgot the production manager forgot to tell everyone that we're having a fake shootout. I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah. And within within like a fucking four scare block because it's played out like the North Hollywood shootout kind of. Yeah. And Val Kilmer has got the fucking MC. And just. And they're using real gunfire, so yeah, they're yeah, using yeah. blanks, but it's, blanks. it's loud as fuck. Right. And like, if you're just walking down the city, like, oh man, there's a hot dog stand over here. Let me just <laughs> Holy fuck, Jesus Christ, we're <laughs> under attack. It's Red Dawn, Red Dawn. <laughs> we talk about how stacked the cast is in fucking Con Air. He's probably got the most st- stacked cast of all time. Yeah, fucking Al Pacino, Robert see, De Niro. D- yeah, Pacino, De Niro, Val Kilmer. Uh, see, uh, what was the guy's name? Tom Sizemore. Tom Sizemore, he's an asshole. Let's see, de- yeah, Dennis Haysbert. Fucking yeah. Henry Rollins. Yeah. Fuck. I feel so bad for Henry Rollins. <laughs> he, he, gets, he tries to get in so many movies, and none of them do that great to the point where he can do more films. Uh, he was a yeah. uh, blockbuster, but uh, he always plays a Nazi. Yeah, I know. He does, right? <laughs> for a guy who hates Nazis. He I was, was going to say... He, but he doesn't... plays a really good Nazi. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was like really the... like Ben Kingsley plays a good Nazi like real like crisp you He's know crisp. You, you know like the you know the uniform is very crisp like you know like no, you can was, say what you say about the American military American military but the Nazis they, they were pretty crisp Henry, Henry, <laughs> the, the three belts the fucking shoes no the, Henry Rollins was like biker Nazi in that yeah. uh, Sons of Anarchy yeah, I was gonna say yeah, Sons yeah, of that Anarchy weird, that fucking rune tattoo on his neck yeah yes. <laughs> blow this motherfucker away <laughs> But yeah, that's what happens in uh, Henry that Rollins needs to show up on this show to scare oh the shit out of me. I would love if Henry Rollins got on this show. I think Dennis's friend is a Nazi. <laughs> the gang meets that's a Nazi. The, that's what it's called. <laughs> the gang meets a Nazi. It's Dude, about. I've met those guys before in real life. They were some terrified motherfuckers. If you're not a, a big size, uh, when I worked at uh, when I worked at that uh, coffee shop in front of the college, yeah, fucking two Nazis rolled up. They were on their way to D.C. The fuck for the federal court, and like they passed through Statesville. And, they fucking rolled up. One dude had a, a jacket on, but he took it off, and he had nothing but a wife beater on and a fucking, I mean, full of tattoos. But the one that makes the biggest one mm-hmm. was a little eagle's head right here, mm-hmm. as you can see. And then the wife, the wife beater showed, mm-hmm. and it was at the iron eagle of the uh-huh. Nazis with the reef, and the reef was probably like that big. Uh, yep. And it had a swastika in it. And I'm like, Yeah, that's fucking scary. What's up, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, what can I give you? What can I get you? He's like, can we have some beers to go? I'm just like, there's literally a gas station over here. Like, you go buy a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you have to come in here? Yeah, but I sold some beers to go. You know, bottled beer is not open or anything. 
And they took off, and this girl with blue hair was walking down the block, and she sees them, and she does a beeline across the street. <laughs> he goes, he goes I, the other I don't blame her. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, holy the th- shit. The thing is, what my petty ass, what I would have done when I was like checking them out and everything, I would have, like, if they got like a screw cap on, I would have gently undone one of the screw caps as I was like trying to check them out and everything. Gotten the license plate number, immediately called the cops, uh, be like, open container. <laughs> yeah, these, guys, these guys aren't the kind to stop the police. They were, oh, driving, they were driving old 1980s Buick Regal. These motherfuckers were roughing it. They, I, they, I don't think they felt like stopping on their way to D.C. <laughs> <laughs> Just on whatever trucker speed they got a hold of. <laughs> trucker speed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, how the, that's how the team, that's how... Uh, the gang should meet Henry Rollins. He can sell the trucker speed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Scared the shit out of him. The scariest cameo that's probably that's uh, later on is probably fucking. Uh, oh god, Rest- what's the wrestler's name? Uh, that died. Uh, that's in Hell Comes to Frogtown. Uh, Roddy, Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper. Yeah. Yeah. He's like what's the scary- his cameo. Uh, Roddy hit- Piper. In one of the wrestling episodes where he's like. Uh, he calls them their, their kids and shit like that. You remind me of you, my son. Oh, that's Roddy Piper. I remember that now. You're right. Yeah, it's you're Roddy, right, Roddy you're Piper. Right. And back in the day, that motherfucker was yoked. Mm-hmm. Like, well, see, that's part of the reason I'm enjoying doing this retrospective is I was always a huge Always Sunny in Philadelphia fan. I just hadn't like gone back and revisited it in a while. Yeah. So I was like, us doing this is actually giving me the chance well, to like go King back and rewatch. Like see, King I'd totally Hill. forgotten that. It's like King of the Hill, man. It's fucking long. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Anything plus 10 seasons is going to take a good chunk of your time. But at least thankfully... Uh, like now we're on episode 15 as the last episode of the season it seems like 15 to 17 is about the yeah. max that they do per season and that's a lot more doable than those King oh, of the Hill ones that, that do like episode, 25 up, episodes to end up that last episode they blow up the cop car oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I love how they're like getting free food and shit acting like they're cops I love the, I like the hot dog guy he's like I can't keep doing it man you break up the bank yeah <laughs> Now this episode's probably my favorite of the season where they uh it starts off with uh Charlie uh talking about how they entered uh into a uh a dance comp he said it was a dance competition. Yes. And uh the winner gets uh he enters gets the Patty's bar. pub as the uh the prize. <laughs> But I, like, I forget what the miscommunication on that was. So he was, it was like, a contract negotiation with a with a DJ, right? But but it was what did he think he was doing for Patty's Pub? Because he didn't realize he was putting the bar up. He thought that Patty's was doing something for a prize. And I'm trying to remember what he thought it was and what it actually turned into being. That being that the bar was up for grabs, whoever, because it's called the game dances our asses off. Essentially, the the rules of the game were music is going to play and you only get like, you know, only a handful of moments to stop. Other than that, you know, you've got to just constantly be moving in some way, shape or form that looks like dancing. Yeah, dance marathon. They would have this shit when I was going to college in Knoxville. They would have like dance marathons that would for like charity and shit like that. Whatever happened to the marathon thing? Because the uh, I even remember that when I was younger, a few radio stations were doing the whole uh, keep your hand on the car, last person to take their hand off the uh, car. A lot of those guys were scamming people. Really? It was wording. Mm-hmm. So, like, a good example is this girl from Hooters who did the whole, like, uh, I think it was at a dance one, but it was similar. Right. She would get a free Toyota. Mm-hmm. They took her out to the park. She won. They oh, a and it gave Yoda her, toy. Gave her a toy Yoda. Yeah. The fuck? And she sued. <laughs> mm-hmm. And because radio stations are like fucking assholes, yeah. uh, they create a situation where there has to be specific wording. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why they kind of stop those kind of things. Yeah. Um, no, I remember the toy you used Yoda to to, thing. You used to be able to like, uh, John Boy and Billy had just a decent one. You just asked her a few questions and he said you like tickets to like Skinner or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember but, those too. But, but the marathon was, I think it just got to the point where it was just wording and like everyone's just lying. Kind of mm. like the price is right back in the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You got a new, like you got a new rogue Nissan rogue. That's awesome. Have fun with the taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the taxes, but the warranty payments on that goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I'm going to be fucking broke. <laughs> oh, same thing was happening with like extreme makeover home edition. Oh, They'd go to these like poverty stricken neighborhoods, renovate this house like crazy, and jack the property taxes up, jack mm-hmm. the property taxes up, and then like more often than not, same thing with like with Hell's Kitchen and uh, Kitchen Nightmares rather. Within like a year or two of the crew being done with the house, they would have to sell it because they couldn't afford the property payments on it anymore because mm. the renovations made it yeah. so much more expensive. Yeah. So literally, they did the opposite of what they wanted to do, it's which like, was uh, help these poverty stricken and families that have been going through major hard hardships by giving them a better house well the better house is now given more issues well, like, so more money kitchen, more problems yeah <laughs> they become uh, the kitchen nightmares people they become part of chef ramsey's like 
corporation. So now, yeah. they, now they have a set of standards that he sets during the episode, mm-hmm. and they have to meet those standards to stay in operation. Yeah. But uh, back to the episode. Yeah, right? yeah, sorry. But back to the episode. Shout out to the Jason and Randy Sklar for appearing in this. I was going to say. I was those guys bring... are hilarious. Man, they're sports commentators, too. Yeah, and they have like the, they're twins, and they have yeah. the exact same voice, too, so they're just yeah. finishing each other's sentences yeah. and promos. <laughs> oh, my God. They're fucking hilarious. And then, like, because, uh, you know, it's everybody – in the, the the cast getting involved with the competition, they're trying to outdo each mm-hmm. other at the same time. Even though they all had the same goal, which is to keep the uh, the fucking bar afloat, right? But of course, it's, it's a new situation. It means whoever wins is now the owner. So D is like, I want to own a Patty's Pub. Everyone wants to own it now instead of everyone just the working waitress. there. I love the waitress. She's oh yeah, the waitress. Oh yeah, I want to get it and burn it down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, she was something like, I'm gonna get it and fire every one of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then like at the beginning of the episode frank had everybody on a list as to uh who's better the better employee or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. there's the ranking system everything else and that's what yeah, they were kind of up top mm-hmm. that's what they were kind of like uh fighting for too it's like well I, why am i number three why am i number four or whatever yeah and that was the ongoing gag is that he'd turn to someone and be like mac you're number two now <laughs> and then when they actually have the comp the dance uh the dance offs with themselves it all like uh kind of played out like a fucking like a mortal combat yeah. thing or yes. whatever it was like uh, Dennis versus uh, Mac. Mac. Uh-huh. And Ma- a- Max just starts doing like a Max version of dancing. It's just karate chopping. Yes. And it's, going, it's like the beat with some butthead thing. I love Danny DeVito's trick was to make weird drug field brownies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. And then everyone just starts slowly passing out. And they're, and they're like fighting what, what it was like Ambien or some shit that was yeah. in it. And they're like fighting the Ambien. Like, I'm and Charlie, staying and Charlie, away. And Charlie was still going because oh, he's yeah. running on acid. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's yeah. on acid and a shit ton of coke from the fucking uh, yeah. episode or two before when he was uh, yelling out in the Nightman song. <laughs> and of course, Dennis is trying to mack on the, the pretty girl that's there and like, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I'm a dance instructor. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> to the wife and the, uh, the fiance is just like, he he's just wanting to grind on you. He's like, no, honey, he's a professional. Don't here. Why don't and, and he like flips it on him. He's like, here. Why, why don't you try? And he's like trying to help him and everything. Yeah. And then intentionally just like knocks his ass down. He's like, oh, you should hold so on to me. Why, why are you so bad at dancing? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, you should have been holding and on then to he me, drops man. Her. Yeah. yeah, he's like dropping her like so fucking fast. Oh yeah, because she was like, I'm not gonna fuck you. He's like, what? Really? She's like, yeah, no. He's like, oh, well, fuck this. And like, just literally lets her go and she drops to the floor and it just like dances away. <laughs> She's like, you're a pig. And he's just kind of like, I know. I know. <laughs> dances away. <laughs> it's like, uh, was it, is it D who wins? Wins? I thought it was Charlie. It, no, it was, it was uh, the homeless man. It was the yeah. It was, oh, it was, yeah. It was Frank's ace in the hole. <laughs> yeah, it was Frank's ace in the hole. So technically, Frank owns the bar. Yeah. Yep. But like, uh, Fucking cricket gets fucked again. Yes, yeah, so he gets those fucking like robot those little yeah, like they walking cut the legs. Fucking, like, they cut the fucking like hydraulics to it. Yes. <laughs> I forgot about that. Bitch. He's like, oh my god, I did this for you, D. <laughs> She's like, get the fuck away from me, you piece of trash. And then it shows uh, Charlie dancing against uh, Dennis, and it's just you know they're playing "Take My Breath Away" from the Top Gun soundtrack. And the only part of the dance that they show Charlie do is just him kind of like waving his arms up like he's gonna do like the butterfly dance or whatever it just immediately cuts to Dennis with the fucking keg around his waist because that's what happens to the losers yeah, yeah. That's a keg. god that'd be heavy as fuck a little pony keg around your dick yeah fuck even if it's empty I, I was just about to say that because I remember at the rim when I was, we were just kind of helping like move things around they had those couple kegs outside and I was gonna like try to move it to like more of a central area I even like semi picked it up like nope. nope two days at the rim I'm dog tired. I can't move this. <laughs> and then uh, Matt gets the hydraulic legs from Cricket when yeah. he gets on his. Uh, yeah, that's tape. how he's he still holding it. Them. Yeah. Yeah, it's like duct tape and metal. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of like doing like this little move, or just waving his arms. I like how Cricket's side side. like crawling on the ground. And she's like, get away from me, you piss ant, and like kicks him. <laughs> you street urchin. <laughs> street urchin. Yes. <laughs> you street person. <laughs> I like I love that. That's their idea. That's that's their go to is to they may be shit, but at least they're not street people. <laughs> God damn it! And at the end of it, with the uh, Frank's guy wins, everybody's like, "Well, at least I'm not a. Uh, well, if I'm not last place anymore, who is?" And he just goes, "Charlie." And Charlie's just like passed the fuck out on the floor. Yeah, just drooling. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> he's fighting it because he's still standing. Woo-hoo. Yeah. No, that's definitely one of my favorite ones because like everybody gets their dance moment too. Yes, in their own hilarious way. <laughs> Nah, it's, again, just proving that this is just a fucking fantastic show, and it's been really nice on the rewatch, too. 
Animals. You know, animals. Fucking animals, very, man. Very colorful animals as the series progresses. <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> no, but it, it is every so... I, I equate this show as to why I like watching it. It's the reason why, I like, maybe once every other year, I'll go on, like, a day and go on, like, a Mari and Jerry Springer binge Ugh. for, like, a day. It's disgusting. So, yeah, it's mm, it's the worst. It. It's, de- it's deplorable. That was it's one nasty. There, but awesome. you know why I do it? It makes you feel so much better about your own life. Not until you see somebody <laughs> you've met on there. Do what? Not until you see somebody you've met on there. Oh, one of my old best friends uh, made his way onto Jerry Springer. Yep. Yes, same. same. Yep. Uh, but not Maury. Mm-hmm. Maury. Maury. And then uh, I like that one girl showed up on Maury. She is like 14 different times. And she oh, still couldn't yeah, find the father. I'm just like, God damn, did you go through a fucking... <laughs> Building a motherfucker. She basically just like went to the bus station, spread yeah. her legs, and went. All right. She yeah. went. <laughs> she bought the Wu Tang Clan, the roadies, the yeah. crew, <laughs> and nine, the fans. Nine's not a lot of big. It's not a big number, but when it comes to certain things, nine's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> nine doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're old, nine kisses in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Whore. <laughs> no, it's whoer. Whoer. <laughs> whoer. She was a whoer, Tony. <laughs> Just a fucking whoer. Well, that's been our thoughts on season three of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I can't wait till we get to season four, five, six, and we just keep on going. And this is going to be one of the few shows that once we get to the very end of the seasons, we'll be able to revisit it when new seasons finish. And yep. then be able to just do the brand new seasons on a retrospective. So we actually set ourselves up nice with this one. This isn't going to be like King of the Hill that once we're done, it just dies on the vine. Always Sunny is something that we'll be able to keep that little thread going as long as they keep that show going. Well, unless it works out like it does with all our fucking episodes, someone's dying. Someone famous dies. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Speaking of that, uh, Sonny Chiba died. Yep. Over the week. Who is this? Sonny Chiba, one of the greatest martial artists of all time. Oh, okay. He was in uh, Kill Bill. Uh, which which uh, character was that? Let me look that up. He was the uh, Asian uh, sushi chef who made the swords. Oh, okay. But yeah, he was in uh, the original Street Fighter movie. Mm-hmm. The original Street Fighter movie. He rips a dude's testicles off with their hand. It's fucking ruthless. <laughs> Huge bucket of win, right? Yeah. He knew it all. You man. got the nuts? No. 82 years old. Yeah. Hmm. Lived a good life, yeah. man. But yeah, gone. Damn. R.I.P., brother. Yeah, I can't wait to see who else dies on their next podcast. Yeah, really, we're, we're getting pretty good at this. Good enough, I think we can get Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> How much money you got on that one? Still, should we just get our? Uh, God, son- that's, that's a pull, man. She's gonna outlive all of us, even the sun. Oh fuck! It's just gonna be her and Queen Elizabeth just fighting it out, and and Jimmy Carter just rebuilding everything. From yeah, there. <laughs> rebuilding the fucking earth yeah. at the age you of one hundred to five. You mean Jesus Christ? Yeah, yeah the carpenter. JC, <laughs> <He's a> carpenter. <laughs> Telling Garth Brooks, are you tired, Garth? Get your fat ass up and help me build this house. <laughs> Willie Nelson's been in the back just singing to everybody just yeah. as, they're, as they're building it. He points at Willie, you're doing a great job. You're a beautiful sunfish. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Nelson's just high spot just going like, what happened? Yeah. Man, that fucking house just came up. Quick! Yeah. <laughs> well, for this episode of The Couch Potatoes, I've been Alex. This is Cap. And Chris, do you have any sort of final thoughts We will for us? kill again. <laughs> <laughs>